Manchester City mast. Uh, I think this has got to be one of the best stadiums in the in the country. 48,000 screaming blue Mancunians, the best team in the land and all the world. Ricky ring walks to Blue Moon, which has helped cement an even larger fan base. And the Hatton family have city history. Ricky's father Ray was once their right back, and Ricky was even on the books as a skillful schoolboy. When you're a kid of 13, 14 years of age, you know, you try a bit of everything. I was doing a bit of boxing, a bit of football, and I was at a, a high level for both, really. I was at the City School of Excellence. I played for Tameside Boys, which is my county team, uh, and also I was winning national titles as a, as a boxer. So, uh, you know, it was coming to the, the point where I'd have to make a choose a decision, football or boxing, you know, so uh, in the end, boxing was, uh, was the winner. Now he cheers City on from the comfort of a well-earned executive box and loves to join the players for some light-hearted training. <laughs> when do we do the boxing? They're both going from strength to strength. Hatton maintains winning ways in the ring and Stuart Pearce has recently restored the right results on the pitch. Good luck, mate. Cheers, Stuart. Thanks for having me down. You know the whole squad will be on you all the way. While he is a lifelong blue, Hatton will unite the whole of Manchester on this huge weekend for the city. At the end of the day, I'm a Mancunian, born and bred. I'm proud of my hometown of Manchester. And whether you're a, a Manchester United fan or a Manchester City fan, Manchester in general come to support Ricky Hatton. Ricky Hatton's proud of his hometown of Manchester. And uh, this is not only the shot that I've been craving and the shot I deserve, it's the shot that my loyal fans deserve as well. And um, June the 4th, we're all going to do it together. Ricky Hatton has become a household name. Massive exposure blended with terrific performances has seen him enjoy celebrity status. I think it just shows how far I've come as a fighter and how far I've come as, as a, you know, a bit of a draw card, you know, as a, as a, you know, as a name. Promoter Frank Warren has launched Ricky onto the big stage just as he made world stars of Prince Nassim Hamad, Nigel Benn and Frank Bruno. All these guys have been a product of terrestrial TV. Ricky Hatton is Ricky Hatton has purely came th come through on Sky. You know, everybody said it can't be done. Well, it's been done. Ricky quickly found his feet with all sections of the media. He's as comfortable dealing with press demands as he is with live television interviews, phone-ins, or more relaxed chats for sports and lifestyle magazines. But he doesn't believe all his own publicity. I've achieved so much in boxing so far, but you won't get me singing my praises just yet because I feel I won't be satisfied until I've fulfilled my full potential. And if I fulfill, fulfill my full potential, what I have been given, uh, nothing less than an undisputed champion will satisfy me. Ricky's certainly not arrogant in any way. Down to earth, he has the ability to laugh at himself, as seen in his growing role as an after-dinner speaker. I said, I'm in New York. I said, I'm, I'm on my own. I said, he's had six fights. I said, he's only lost two. He said, he's ten pound heavier than me. And I said, I've got no one here with me. I'm on my own. He said, Rick, Rick, calm down, son. He said, if he was any good, he wouldn't be fighting you. <laughs> At 26, Ricky Hatton is a well-rounded public attraction. Christmas 2003 was hardly present-giving time as big-punching Ben Tacky came to Manchester with a feared reputation. The Ghanaian had pushed Kostya Tsu all the way and Hatton had to raise his game to another level. So this is it, the most dangerous assignment yet for Ricky Hatton after 33 straight wins. In with the former two-time world title challenger in Taki. And there's the first rib cruncher. And another one too. You can outbox this guy, Ben Tacky. Sharmbe Mitchell did it. Sue chose to do it. That was a kind of respect for the power he knew Tacky possessed. Well, he's starting well, Hatton, but he's wanting to get involved because he's having some success. That could be 
a danger. Can't miss him with the jab. No head movement from Taki, who's caught by the right hand as well. Oh, there's one of those left hooks to the body. He really just moves off to the side at times just to dig those in. And that's part of the strategy. Good body shot there from Taki, though. Yeah, there's a couple of good ones went in, but hands a better left hook to the head. And a right to the body as well. Just starting to wind these shots up now, Taki. Just coming alive a little bit. Jab working well, Hatton looking for the, the left hook to the body. Another stiff jab, but there's an indestructibility about this guy, Taki, and he seems to be making a target of Hatton's body. There's a tension around the arena. People know they're watching something pretty significant here in the Hatton story. Great jab, isn't it, tonight? Real ramrod jab. It is, and it's got such a nice rhythm. You know, he's just sticking it out effortlessly. Fast punches, too, and there's no head movement at all from Tucky. So easy to hit. But the thing is, he can absorb them all like blotting paper. It's a really big left hand into the pit of the stomach from Hatton. Oh, some really nice work, but he caught he caught a right hand there as well. Oh, and he did just seem to wilt a moment then. Taki stiffened, didn't he? After that attack, the leg stiffened momentarily. Now is Hatton just starting to get there with this systematic attack? That's a big right hand from Ricky Hatton that time. There's the jab, and the right hand just on the chin, the legs. Just stiffened there. Another angle right on the point of the chin. Excellent shot. He's showing his world class here, Ricky Hatton. Again, beautiful boxing from Hatton behind the jab. And then he steps up to the side tries to get ready for the next assault so that Taki can never quite set himself. He's clever, he's well thought out. Boy, breaking right hand from hand there, explodes off the side of Taki's jaw and still he doesn't look like going down from it. Maybe that Hatton will have to do it the long route. And top lost. level against these kind of guys. He lost his balance a little bit there. Taki, another great shot from Han. Left uppercut this time. And another one from the locker. The crowd are already in celebratory move. And Taki, Taki landed a right hand there. And it sent the sweat spraying off the side of Hatton's face at the start of the round. And there is a little warning for everybody to take nothing for granted. Taki does need a knockout now. He can't win on the cards. And he's going for it. He's going for it. Taki here. He's been here with three good shots. Hatton and... Danger in round 11. He did hurt Hatton with that right hand. Right on the bell, just as, as the round started. Straight out, big right hand. Hatton on the verge of his biggest win yet. It will be a formality on the scorecards. It really will. If he gets to hear that final bell, and there's no sign of anything going wrong yet, although he, he kind of dropped his glove there and took a right hand to the temple. Oh, and he's got a right hand there, which he walked onto, and he collapsed into Taki. That was a big punch from the Ghanaian, and Hatton wilted under that one. Oh, dear, he's really keeping everybody on tenterhooks right to the end here. That was a terrible moment for Hatton. But he's got through, he's got through, and he surely has won. Ryan Carroll, his mum and dad, celebrate. It was a spectacular performance, not only of hitting this time, but of some sweet boxing too.
in a tumultuous atmosphere in Manchester. It really is. I always knew that, you know, this was going to be my biggest test, but I think my toughest test proved to be my best performance. I know people are saying, you know, I'm a come forward, body puncher, marauding type of fighter, but, you know, I can box when I need to, when, I need, when I'm in there with an opponent that I need to box against. Sometimes it's not, sometimes it's necessary to apply pressure, then sometimes it's right to be a slipster. And I, I, I've been saying for a bit I can do it all, and I hope I proved a little bit more tonight. Roberto Duran is Ricky's boyhood idol, and the hitman's developed the same ferocious technique as the legendary Hands of Stone. He fights with that similar aggressive style, and he's built a shrine to Duran and other greats at his family home. A real boxing historian. Yeah, these are all my me, um, me boxing videos. I've got over, uh, must be nearly, near enough 100 fight videos of all the, all the great champions of old. Uh, like I say, even if I wasn't a boxer, I think I'd still be a you know a, a boxing fan. So all, my, all my boxing videos here. Yeah, I've got a few pictures here. I started collecting bits of memorabilia. I've got a signed picture there by Willie Pep, Ruben Hurricane Carter, my idol there, Roberto, Roberto uh, Duran, signed picture by Roberto. It's a picture there with obviously Naz and yeah. there's our Frank. You shared a ring with Tommy Hearns, haven't you? I certainly did. Tommy Hearns uh, was fantastic. He's another one of my, you know, my all-time greats. Ricky never tires of getting those videos out. Even now, he believes he can add more to his game from studying the legends. I'm a fan of all styles of boxing, not just the attacking fighters. I mean, fighters of yesteryears like Willie Pep and you know Sugar Ray Robinson, who were fantastic boxers, boxer movers. Mamed Ali, who was. Uh, technically you know outstanding but uh i prefer you know the, the duran fighters the julio caesar chavez the the tyson when he was in his eight days that's my my preference at the end of the day the boxer you know is paid to have the hand raised at the end of the fight that's the top and bottom of it but it's a little bit of an extra incentive with me to put on an exciting performance for the for the fans and the viewers and roberto duran did that didn't he By the end of 2004, Ricky had become mandatory challenger to Kostya Tsu, but he still took a tricky test in the capital against world-class Ray Oliveira. It is a fight that the ever-popular Manchester light welterweights expected to come through, but at what cost? Will he be extended? Will the old cuts problems re-emerge? Will any new weaknesses be exploited? Fast start from Hatton as ever with those thunderous body shots going to work straight away and Oliveira has uh, held records for the amount of punches he has landed in contests so this should be very very entertaining Hatton started very purposeful indeed he's getting off with some terrific shots not missing with very many at all through the middle, just misses a little bit, then a, a clubbing right hand to the side of the head. He was straight up, Oliveira, with a, a little bit of a smile playing across his face, but he's felt the, the power early. Look at that left, corkscrew type uppercut, which Billy Graham said is the tactics here. It's an assault from all sides, all angles. It really is. He's going to have to be at his very best, Oliveira, to get through this. Been through with tough opponents before and saw the, the final bell. Oh, left hook to the body. That's his favourite punch. It's seen off so many opponents, but still, Oliveira sucks it up. <laughs> Look at that right to the ribs from Hatton. Side to side, siding and ferocious punches. Well, he must have an awful lot of pride. Ray Oliveira is taken so much, still tries to fight back. 
All right hand, he took flush on the chin there, Oliveira, and didn't shift him. Hatton throws more on the target. He's thrown something like over 500 punches already, and there's blood from the nose of Oliveira. Still, he hasn't floored him again, Glenn. No, he's still there. He's still dangerous as long as he's in there, Oliveira. <laughs> Left hook to the head. Gets through from Hatton. Still finding the target. There's the jab. First real signs hasn't used that very much tonight, Hat. No, he hasn't really needed to. He managed to get close and get his shots on with, with accuracy, and you know, so he hasn't needed the jab. And no problems with the right eye of Oliveira. Yeah, blinking quite badly there, Ray Oliveira. Taking a body shot from the other side, too. There you go, Ricky! There you go! What is he made of? Bounces up and down, give a little shout to Hatton. Still there, still top. Did he say in the corner there? Problem with his eardrum, maybe? Well, he's been rattled around the, the side of the head, around the ear with that right hand. They might have some, some problems. Surely it's just a survival mission now, Glenn. It's uh, been a total shutout, and he's starting to complain about things now. Maybe the ear is a problem. Yeah, that was the, the ear he was signaling to. He put his hand over it. Well, maybe he's got problems with an eardrum. Oh, right hand. You can feel the force of that from Hatton. He's still punching with so much intent, even this late on in the fight. This is the first time he's really looked like he's starting just to come apart a little bit. Oliveira starting to wilt, just defensive as these shots go in. Well, if he can get the stoppage, that would be tremendous for Hatton, give him so much confidence. Is Mickey Van taking a closer look? He has to go down for the second time in the fight here in the 10th round. His ear is giving him all sorts of trouble. He looks in his corner, he smiles, he sh shakes his head. Ricky Hatton becomes the first man to stop the teak tough Super Ray Oliveira and sends a threatening warning out to the whole of the world welterweight division and in particular the number one who he's slated to fight next Kostya Tsu. damage to that ear I think was disturbing and big right hands it went in all night long and again that shot on the side of the head beautiful punch from Hatton but really Glenn hadn't he just been on the end of a one-sided dishing out of terrific quality and quantity from Hatton. How high do you rate this sort of performance? Yeah, this is the man who throws an awful lot of punches. He couldn't throw those punches because he was taking them tonight. And big celebrations for Hatton. He enjoyed that performance and the, the massive crowd here certainly did. Obviously, uh, Oliver had, had, had fought Vince Phillips and Ben Taki and lost by the narrowest of margins. And when you, you think that those were my, my toughest... Uh, Test. Don't forget, I'd already secured the shot against Kostya Zou, so I didn't really need to fight someone as tough as Ray Oliveira, but I did, and I, and I stopped him. And I think that shows you how much further I can go. Finally, Ricky Hatton gets his crack at Kostya Tsu. The hitman aims to silence the thunder from down under in the cauldron of Manchester's MEN Arena. Some people would just be happy getting the biggest payday of their life and getting the opportunity. I'm, you know, happy for getting the opportunity, but I'm happy because it's a fight I know I can, I'm well capable of winning. It's a great challenge. 
That's the reason why I took this challenge. I'm just looking for great challenge, uh, something that's gonna excite me, something that's gonna uh, put me on a different level. 22,000 tickets were snapped up in hours. 25 million is expected to be generated for the city. Could home advantage just prove crucial for the hitman? The noise is going to be deafening, the feeling so intense, and Ricky's been down to his boxing home for a dress rehearsal. So 22,000 people in here, you're walking in, biggest night of your life. What are you thinking? Uh, crumbs. <laughs> but no, uh, it's just the stuff you always dream of, innit? You know, fight for the undisputed title in your hometown of, of Manchester. Will you get nervous? Yeah, very much so, very much heart so. Heart going? Heart going, heart going like the clappers. Uh, but I can always have the consolation that it won't be going half as fast as my mum and dad's at ringside, I suppose. But no, I just, uh, you know, that would make me better on the night. You know, if any any fighter would tell you the more nervous you are, the more sharp and the more cautious you, you are. And obviously that's one of the key factors in the fight. I've got to be cautious and I've got to be careful, so. How much of the atmosphere do you sense in here when you, when, when you get in the ring and there's, there's 22,000 going mad? Do, do you hear them? Do you see them? Um, no, you don't. You might, you know, you look in the crowd and you can see everybody getting worked up and screaming and shouting and that, but uh, basically it's just a deafening noise. Generally, there's normally been about, you know, 15, 16,000, you know, we've got probably an extra seven or 8,000 on top of that. I can't even begin to imagine the, the sound that would absolutely lift the roof off the place. Kostya Tsu has reigned supreme for years as the best light welterweight of his generation with a blend of skills, ring craft and phenomenal power. The thunder from down under indeed. That's why he's the world number one. Tsu sits on top of a tremendous 10-stone division that features the dazzling Floyd Mayweather, the irrepressible Arturo Gatti and the fabulous Miguel Cotto. It's a time when Britain once again expects. The hitman starts as a big underdog, but then remember when John H. Tracy overcame the odds against Jose Napoles in Mexico. Lloyd Hunnigan took out the brilliant American Don Curry, and Barry McGuigan stunned Eusebio Pedroza. Exactly 20 years on from that lofty night in London, and 10 years since Nigel Benn beat Gerald McClellan and Frank Bruno outboxed Oliver McCall. The biggest British fight in a decade and the chance for Ricky Hatton to add his name to that illustrious list. I hope to not only do myself, my family and my friends proud, you know, do the country proud. It's great when we have British fighters winning world titles. Hopefully, I'm, you know, I'm going to you know, do a lot for, for British boxing, not only for, you know, for myself. 16 weeks ago, Hatton began shedding weight following his restful annual cruise. Maintaining a strict diet, even altering his body clock for evening training sessions in preparation for the 2 a.m. start. Fight's drawing near, training's gone Fantastic, you know, no uh, no injuries, no weight problems, you know, sparring's gone brilliant. It's just, uh, I think everything's just come at the right time. Meanwhile, Hughes worked as hard as ever in his home city of Sydney. A meticulous three-month training camp filled with quality sparring. Arriving two weeks ahead of fight night with his huge team proves he's taken this very seriously. I expect a hard fight. Uh, every time I step in the ring against anybody, it's danger. We, we consider him the most dangerous man in the world right now because he's out there to fight Kostya. And, you know, there's, there's nobody more dangerous than that. Team Sue have based themselves behind closed doors in Bolton, while Hatton's been his usual accessible self mixing with the media. The truth comes in the ring. Will Ricky Hatton cope with the step up? At 35, will Kostya Tsu suddenly become old? What happens when Tsu lands one of his massive right hands? And can Hatton impose his intense work rate and body shots on a man of Tsu's class? He's stepping up to the different level. 
He fought against great opponent recently, against uh, Ben Taiki is a great fighter. Uh, I mean, Vince Phillips, Oliveira. This is all great fighters. Uh, but, I, but I think I, I am still higher in level than them. Uh, the critics are obviously going to state the obvious that I've never boxed anyone he'd like to, which I totally agree with. Uh, it's a step up from the like my best opponents. Will, but look how I've, I've breezed through the level I've been fighting at. I haven't lost many rounds. I've won my fights, my toughest fights, still, I believe, in second gear and not bringing out all my attributes that I've got in my game. You know, so I think I've showed in the way I have won my toughest fights to date and the ease I've won my toughest fights to date that I can bridge that gap in class, and I will do. It's a fascinating fight that pits the wise old pro with the young, ambitious hope. What a mouth-watering matchup, a magnificent boxing occasion. Wonderful clash of styles, and it could produce an absolutely classic fight. There has been this element of Ricky uh, boxing within himself, and I think he can raise his game uh, for, for the big test, which this is. And I think that if Ricky can get through those first four rounds, then maybe his youth, his hunger, his ambition, and the 22,000 fans could play a big part. Winning this will not only change Ricky Hatton's life forever, it will make him a superstar and secure his legacy in British sporting history. We all want to become a world champion, but not many people get the chance to be the number one in the division. And I've got that opportunity and believe you may you know, have faith.